Hey, what's up guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and it is time for another project. Um, what we've got in front of us here, which hopefully you can see from the side camera, is another 3D printer kit. This is the Tronc CX3. Uh, Gearbest was awesome enough to contact me and ask me if I was interested in reviewing it, and after taking a look at it, I'd already heard quite a lot about the brand Tronxy, um, but I had not really heard of this machine in particular, and I liked what I saw. It has a full aluminum frame, as well as a um, fairly large build height. Um, it's I want to say the build height is 300 millimeters, so it's bigger than yeah 300 millimeter build height. Which, so it's bigger than any machine that I currently have. And um, my plan for this, before I really quick uh, get into the unboxing here, is um, just to leave it completely stock. The only things I plan on uh, like altering at all are maybe um, if there's anything I think that could be a safety issue, then maybe I'll do like some hard wiring different than the A8, which we completely tweaked out. I don't plan on doing that with this. I just want to see how well it runs out of the box with as little tweaking as possible. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, in this video, we're going to go ahead and unbox it, see what it all came with, put it on the desk. Hopefully nothing's broken or anything like that. And um, yeah, then we will go from there. So let's go ahead and take a look. I should have some scissors later on here somewhere. Um, we'll use these little clipper things see if I can and it's it's literally this <laughs> this kit's been in my room for uh, at least a month just in the corner I <laughs> I just needed some time after the Annette a8 build because um, it was a really involved build to just take a pause for a few weeks before cracking open another build um, I'm also not going to be doing like a step-by-step -step build like I did with the Annette a8 um, it was just very, very time consuming. And um, I'm either just gonna be live streaming this build and that way if you wanna reference it, you can. Um, and then maybe afterwards do like a uh, brief synopsis of the things that I thought you might get stomped on or stumped on if you're building it yourself. That way maybe I can help save you some time, but I'll just go ahead and kind of show up what's in the box here. Um, hopefully you can catch some of it. So we have got a wired up power switch, which is nice. I always like when printers come with a power switch, so I don't have to install one myself. Then we have got a very large bag of screws and risers and nuts. Looks like M3 screws, some larger ones, which I will say right off the bat, this does not um, this does not excite me too much because. Uh, it's been really nice, like with the Annette A8 and a couple of the machines I built. They've got these all separated out, and it saves a lot of time and trouble, um, which basically means I'll probably just have to separate these out before I even start the build. It's much better to have all of your hardware separated out before trying to tackle it than waiting, you know, till you're you're really involved with it and you can't find screws or you see things are missing. So um, definitely a tip to do that first. Then we've got a little micro uh, SD card with a USB adapter, which I would imagine probably has like the build files and um, maybe like the firmware and stuff like that on there. Usually what they have. We've got a standard power cable, but it is European, so I will not be using will not be using that. We've got a really tiny flathead screwdriver. We've got a much larger Phillips screwdriver. Sorry if you guys hear banging in the background. Um, my godson and um, the eight month old are in the living room, so they're being babies. Um, we got a bunch of different keys here, which are probably gonna be for just like the extruder, um, maybe the bed, the usual 3D printer stuff. We've got, uh, I guess this is our sample filament, which I, I don't even know why companies include sample filament like this when you really like, you can't really print anything with this. I mean, I don't know what, maybe a 20 by 20 calibration cube, if that. It's kind of pointless. I guess they just do it so that way they can say includes sample filament, but whatever. Then we've got our, uh, very similar to the um, an A8, the aluminum hot plate that's got the heat cartridge built into it. So that worked, it worked out pretty well on my A8. So. I'm not too upset with this. And this one, I do like, this one is directly soldered to the uh, to the actual board versus using the plug, so I won't have to do that myself. That's that's nice. 
And we've got a huge sheet of looks like uh, like painters tape for the hotbed. So if you wanted to stick that on, I guess you could. I might give that a shot. Maybe not. I don't. I'm not really sure. Then we've got let's see a bunch of we got some belts, some zip ties. We've got um, cable wrap. So basically stuff for cleaning up your print. Which is nice. I always like they include that. Then we've got our our bunch of acrylic parts here. We've got a little Tronxy, maybe side panel here. Another one of those. Uh, this looks like maybe it's for the bed. I'm not too sure. From the picture I saw, it, it didn't look like it used very much um, acrylic. It doesn't look like it uses very much acrylic at all, actually. So. I think the acrylic might be actually more for the electronic housing than anything else because the actual printer itself, it's aluminum, like pretty much all of it. So it's interesting because there's quite a lot of acrylic in here. Got another big piece of acrylic, another big piece of acrylic. Again, I do think that this is actually more for the electronics and it would make sense. There's, you've got like a fan or an exhaust uh, vent right there. so. It would make sense that this is going to be for electronics. Power supply. This looks actually smaller than... Maybe I'm tripping, but it feels a little smaller than what I'm used to. But yeah, we've got our switch for 110 or 220 volts. So i got to make sure I put that correctly because it's set, looks like, for European standards. And then we've got all of our lines for the 3D printer. A lot of our... This is aluminum, right? I... Yeah, it is. It's totally aluminum. It feels weird for some reason. I don't know. It's like coated in, I guess, maybe just paint, which gives it kind of like a weird feeling. But they are aluminum, like uh, 2020 extrusions. I think they're 2020 extrusions. Maybe bigger? Maybe they're 30, 30 extrusions? I don't know. But yeah, these are primarily what the frame of the printer is made out of, which is awesome. This is really good. Um, this is much better stuff than like the acrylic that the... Uh, Annette A8 is built out of. Although, again, the Annette A8 does... It's functioned ex extremely well for me. Granted, I did a lot of upgrades to it and frame braces and whatnot, but typically, for longevity, aluminum is a much better option. Then we've got our lead screws, which are very... I mean, not very tall, but pretty damn tall, since this is a, again, 300 millimeter build height. I don't really print anything that big, ever, but I do like having a printer that has the option now. You know, if I do want to... Um, print something that is taller because I can't, you know, 200 is pretty much the max on all my other machines. I am dropping stuff. Well, we've got an LCD screen right here, which is dropping shit everywhere. Oh, it looks like, yeah, they're little risers. Well, they didn't have them very tight, so hopefully I can find it on my floor. If not, I'm sure I've got extras, but pretty much the exact same LCD screen setup as the Annette A8 with the buttons buttons seem like they're maybe a little bit bigger. Pretty much the same setup. This looks like a stepper motor attachment piece. Um, maybe some braces. It's definitely less acrylic than the Unit A8 had though. Got end stops, which are just generic looking little. This one doesn't even click. I wonder if this one... Huh. This one might be defective, time will tell. It definitely does not, like, you can hear it, I'm sure. No sound, and then it's not supposed to sound. Huh, we'll see. But they are all wired up, and they've got their little um, plugs, so you don't have to mess with them at all, just plug and play. And I'm sure that they're probably uh, already pre-wired to length, which is why I'm sure that they're different colors. Well, they're not really different colors. Huh, we'll see, time will tell. But usually that they have them at least pre-wired. I mean, not pre-wired, but like wired to length. So that way you don't have to do any um, adjusting. You can just kind of mount them into place. Then we have got... This is this is pretty rad looking. Um, so it's a Bowden setup. But it uses... Um, I don't know where you can see that. It uses 3608 like skateboard style bearings. Or what's pretty much used in all the fidget spinners, it looks like to slide it back and forth along the um, 
along the aluminum, which is different. It doesn't use like the LM8UU bearings, which is pretty much what all of my other printers use. So that'll be really uh, kind of neat to see how this performs compared to the more standard LM8U bearings. And then the hot end, it's kind of, is it, it's really cool. So it's got this aluminum block, right, with a fan that's pretty much like aluminum on all sides blowing directly onto the hot end and the hot end is attached to this aluminum which I would imagine helps dissipate heat it looks very nice um, obviously looks are deceiving but yeah this looks extremely promising um, I've never actually really seen a hot end just like this so that's that's another fun thing about building these printers is that you see you know different very similar things but also different things like that so and it's cool to see how they perform you know, either outperform or underperform each other. Then we've got some 3D printed parts here. I think this is going to be for the Z axis. It looks like it at least. Yeah, I think this is what's going to attach to. They've got the little nuts um, or the threaded nuts for the lead screws. So I'm sure that that's what these are going to be. This is just like my. Uh, um, this is just like my Fulgur Tech 2020. It uses these aluminum brackets to mount um, the stepper motors to the top corners of the 2020 aluminum. We got two more of these, so probably for the X and Y axis, I'd imagine. Got standard printer USB cable. LCD screen cable, we've got all of our wires for our stepper motors. Got some random parts in the bottom of the foam, which I think all fell off of the LCD screen. We'll put that, I got tons of extras, so I'm not too concerned. <laughs> then we've got the control board, which is different looking. It says Troncy on it, so I guess they make their own proprietary boards. It's also it's also bent a little bit, but it doesn't look like anything of concern. We've got our XYZ extruder. We've got our fan, another fan, X stop, Y stop, Z stop, bed temperature, extruder temperature, LCD, USB, hot end, hot bed, and power. So a really simple board. It doesn't look like there's much room for any additionals. Um, or add-ons or whatnot. I haven't looked to see whether you can flash or modify the firmware um, to add to auto bed level if you want to do so. I don't think I'll be doing that on this. Like I said, I plan on keeping it very much so stock. We also got a little reset button on here and it looks like a tiny little micro, um, oops, on this side, micro SD slot so you can print files, um, you know, load it up with files and print directly off. Then we have got a bag of Again, more of those like wheels with the uh, skateboard like 608 style bearings in here. Um, it looks like this is primarily going to be the method that this printer uses for for motion to move the various uh, X and Y axis back and forth. So I'm sure these are going to help move the bed. Huh? They're not very. They've got like a little bit of a rubber grip to them but they're not extremely grippy although they are kind of like they're, the bearings are a little bit lubricated so that could be another reason why it doesn't feel super grippy but yeah like I said it'll be cool to see how these how these work out I, I did watch a couple of videos on this printer just to see like its print quality and I saw some stuff that was really um, quite impressive and they look like the machines weren't really modified so that's cool and then this is stuff that you basically is just going to be used to combine um, uh, the various aluminum pieces together. You've got like these corner, I don't know how well you can see that, but the corner piece right there. And then these guys too. Oops, you can't see it. These corner pieces too just helps um, kind of make the uh, aluminum pieces more uniform or solid. And we've got a couple more little bearing sliding pieces. I don't like that there's loose stuff in here. Uh, just 
definitely don't want to lose anything before I get started. We've got a got an extruder, which feels like it might be aluminum. In this bag right here, which has got little Bowden Bowden fitting, I think you can see that right there. So it looks like all that we've got left are now a bunch of stepper motors, so let's go ahead and take all these out. So, my plan of action before actually starting this is to separate this bag, um, at least somewhat break them down. I don't think I have, I used to have, like, I printed it for another one of my builds, like a little ice cube tray type thing that allowed me to separate them and that. I might 3D print another one of those tonight, so that way I'm ready to rock and roll. And then, um... Let me know in the comments down below how many of you guys are actually interested in hanging out or watching this build. If there's quite a few of you, then I'll schedule. Um, I'll try to schedule out the live streams for building this. Um, if not, then I'll probably just live stream it whenever. Like if I'm like, okay, I got some time now, I'll just hit live stream and whoever hops in hops in. But if there's enough of you guys that are interested, I don't know how popular this machine is, like or how many of you are interested in seeing this machine being built live, um, or just want to hang out. But let me know in the comments down below, and that'll kind of help me decide. And then I'll uh, I'll go from there. So uh, once again, guys, this is the Tronxy uh, X3. Uh, I got this from Gearbest. Um, they're not. It's not like a paid sponsorship or anything like that. If I hate this machine, I'll say I hate this machine. Um, they were just cool enough to send it my way. So I'm very much still looking forward to building it. And it looks promising with the aluminum frame. And you know, again, it'll be interesting to see how it works with these bearings versus the standard LM8 UU bearings. And um, I'm looking forward to having another machine. I'm, I'm um, starting to get things a little more organized here and whatnot. So anyways, don't forget to smack the like button and let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace guys.